So today, day one, we're talking mindset and habits. And the reason why I wanted to start with this is because our mind is so powerful um, and our habits, our routines and our rituals are powerful too in the way that um, they can really uh, either make or break us in a way, for lack of a better term, because it's really easy to either just get caught up in the day-to-day of what's happening or to be really intentional about your day and how you're living. So we're going to explore that in just a moment. Let's start with mindset, first of all. As I said, our mind is so powerful. It can be our worst enemy or our greatest ally, depending on how we think and how we allow those thoughts to I guess, shape our reality. And this might take some time if you have been caught in a loop of perhaps negative mindsets or negative loop thought patterns. So the first step that you're going to have to do is start to create awareness of your thoughts. And this is going to require you to become really super self-aware of what your mind is telling you. I want you to have a think about some of the, I guess, perceived negative thought patterns that you've had, even if you've had some just recently. And ask yourself, are these thoughts actually true? And a lot of times you'll find that they're not. Uh, And our mind can really sabotage us. if we're not programming our mind in the way that we want it to. So the first thing I want you to do is just become really super self-aware, generally speaking, but in this instance with your mindset and with your thoughts. And this might take some time to cultivate and get into the habit and the routine of doing this. So any time that you can remember to do so throughout your day, tune in and have a think pun intended have a think of like is this a positive and it's not I don't always like to label things positive or negative but I think I know I think you know what I mean by this is this a helpful thought or is this an unhelpful thought so if something might pop up maybe you're having some self-doubt coming into your mind maybe you're um feel like you're having a bad day and then because you you're in that mindset then you start to manifest all of these other things that towards you throughout the day that in turn does make it a bit of a bad day you know what I mean and so this is where you want to be really super self-aware if one of those perceived negative mindsets or thoughts pop up during the day just take a moment to pause And it might depend on where you are. So, for example, if you're at work or a public place, it might just be as simple as recognizing the thought and seeing if you can flip the script. If you're at home and you're having these negative thoughts, maybe you can take some time to reflect on them or journal on them or, um, yeah, just have a think about what you can do to shift that mindset. And a lot of times you might need a tool to break yourself out of that mindset. And what I find really helps is just to jump up and do something different. Um, Shake your body, just shift the energy, go outside, put your feet on the ground, something like that. So that's going to be the first thing, just identifying and being aware of your thoughts. I wanted to highlight here that you have the power to choose your thoughts. You have the power to choose either a negative mindset or a negative thought, and you also have the power to choose a positive. Have you ever met one of those people that's just super optimistic and super happy and just really is able to take whatever comes in their stride? This is what I'm saying. You don't have to go to that extreme. It might take some time to build up to that. But it's just a really good example of the power that you have in your own two hands, in your mind, of the outlook on life and the outlook on things that happen throughout your life. Um, 
we always have the power to choose. So I really just wanted to highlight that as well. And the power of our thoughts are really going to manifest. So our thoughts are going to create our reality. So I'm not sure if you've heard a lot about the practice of manifestation, and we're not going to cover that in this short course, but if you're interested in it or the law of attraction, um, definitely go and look it up. But in its essence, what we think and how we feel is going to, on the inside and in our mind, is going to manifest in our outer reality. So our outer reality, how our life is, is a direct reflection of our internal thoughts, our beliefs, our patterns, our habits. And so use this opportunity to manifest the life that you want, knowing that your thoughts are all powerful and you've got everything that you need within you already. We've just got to start to chip away at it if it's been covered up for whatever reason. And yeah, that's what I touched on before with the bad day, good day thing. If you think you're going to have a bad day, you might potentially have a bad day. Think you're going to have a good day and you will probably have a good day. And there's, we can always find the good in the perceived bad situations as well. Maybe not straight away, but definitely um, you'll be able to unearth some gems of wisdom from any situation. And this is not to glaze over, um, you know, sometimes real negative things really do happen in our life. They don't make sense. Um, and this is not to glaze over those things. This is not to bypass our emotions. We'll talk about that on um, day three, I think it is. We're going to talk about emotions and energy. So it's not that. It's definitely not that. It's more of just having the awareness of the power that you have to choose your thoughts as well. And this is going to take some time, as I mentioned at the top of the class, if you have been in this negative um, thought pattern for quite some time, um, it's about rewiring and reprogramming um, our brain and our mind. So if you think about your brain as a computer and we have the opportunity to program it however we choose, which is super powerful. Um, and this is going to take some time, especially if it's been there for a while. Uh, you might just have to slowly unravel and you're going to have to practice some patience and love for yourself as well in this process. So let's talk about how we can do that. Affirmations are a good way to do that. So a positive statement in the present moment. So you could say, I am confident whatever the thing is that you want to work on I am starting with I am and then put the rest of the affirmation after it so you can say them you can write them you can think them you could even record them on a tape recorder or your, your phone these days and listen back in your ears in your own voice it's just so powerful um, and it's extra super potent if you do it when you're in a theta brainwave state so um, if you have a meditation practice, you can play it during a meditation as soon as you get up or um, just before you go to bed when you're starting to really just either come out in or out of sleep um, is a really good way to get straight into your subconscious mind because what our subconscious mind, um, it, what's sitting in there is often different to our logical mind, the one that we have access to. So that's something to consider as well. All right, let's switch gears now and talk about habits and routines and rituals. So as I mentioned right at the top of the call, I find that this is really so powerful um, and a really good indicator of how we're spending our life, how we're spending our days. And it's so easy to... Just get, just get caught up on like the ha hamster wheel of life. And so if we're not bringing awareness to it, then next thing you know, it's been a month, it's been a year, it's been several years and you're still kind of doing the same thing. So I think it's really important to be aware of how we're spending our time. 
So what I'd like you to do is for the next week or so is to keep a journal or a diary and record how you are spending your time, how you're spending your days, as much info as you can um, from the moment you wake up to the moment that you go to bed. So any morning routine, evening or afternoon routines, that's going to give you some really good insight as to what routines are serving you and what isn't and what you know needs to be released and let go um, and it will also give you a really good indication of where you might be wasting time for lack of a better term so an example I'll give is scrolling on your phone when you're not really achieving anything and you're just kind of you know floating around so that's going to give you a really good indication and I'd really like you to do that for the next week or so if you possibly can, because we're, we are creatures of habit and comfort. And so if we start to implement changes, sometimes this can bring us a sense of discomfort if you're someone who doesn't like change. Um, and I think that's pretty much most of us um, as humans, isn't it? So let's do that and let's gather the data and the feedback from that journal, or that diary for the next week. And then you can start to make a list and say, yep, I can keep that, I can keep that, that definitely needs to go. So you'll gather that feedback and then you can collate the ones that you want to keep and they can stay there. And the ones that you need to let go of, again, this might be a process, same as the negative thought patterns. Um, you're just going to have to try as much as you can to catch yourself if you start to slip back into those habits because it does take time to rewire the brain for these habits as well. So have compassion with yourself when you're going through this process as well. So if you're someone who doesn't currently have any habits um, or routines or rituals that are that you and you would like to add some in, particularly if you're wanting to cultivate a deeper sense of overall well-being, just pick one thing. Pick one thing that you want to implement. Pop it in your daily schedule in a time and a place and in a way that feels um, true for you and in a way that it feels really achievable for you and start there. And then as you progress, you might want to add more things, but just take it slow because if you try and do everything all at once, it might overwhelm you and you might just fall off the wagon and just want to go back to square one and not do anything. So take it slow. If you already have a couple of routines or rituals or habits and you want to add some more, you can do the same thing. You can just add them in somewhere that's going to work for you or you can do something that we call habit stacking. So basically what that means is you add one habit um, at a time or routine or ritual to one you've already got. So let's use the example of brushing your teeth in the morning. So you get up and you brush your teeth in the morning and at the same time or just afterwards you could... Um, do oil pulling if you might not know what that is but that's where you you might or you might not but if you don't it's just where you swish um, coconut oil around in your mouth that also helps with your oral health so you're adding two things together so you're getting it done at the same time so that's some options for you as well if you want to start to create more habits and routines and rituals that serve you um as I mentioned just a little bit earlier, it might take you a little while to find your feet in it. Um, it might take a while for you to rewire your brain to get these habits set in stone. And that's the other thing too, is we need these habits as a sturdy foundation for us to do um, pretty much every day, right? But you don't want to become so rigid that it's like taking over your life. So if for whatever reason, there's some reason why you can't do it on a particular day, that's okay. Like it's just going to create more stress for you um, if you're putting too much emphasis on it. So you want it as your sturdy foundation, absolutely. And I think it's so beneficial to do so, but don't get obsessive about it and stressed about it. You want it to enhance your life, not create another stressor for you. So that would be my top tip for that as well. I'm just going to give you some examples of some healthy habits or routines that you might want to add. So maybe 
if you want to improve your diet um, and your nutrition. So you, maybe you could start food prepping or just making sure you're doing a healthy grocery shop. Um, if you want to start bringing some more physical exercise in, you might start a new exercise routine. Maybe you could start a breathwork practice or a meditation practice or a journaling practice. And actually, I'm just going to stop for a second and talk about journaling because I forgot to mention that earlier um, when we were talking about mindset and even um, your habits as well. Journaling is a really good way and some people like it and some people don't resonate with it so much. So you could try it out if you haven't done so already. But journaling is a really good way to get access to that subconscious mind. Um, so you can grab a notebook, start writing and either you know, process whatever's happened during the day. Um, you could just start writing and see what comes out on the page, but it's a really good way to acknowledge and process those emotions and just get a little bit of insight as to what's going on up there in your mind as well. So I just wanted to stop and quickly highlight that as well. And taking some time and giving yourself some love and compassion when you are going through that process of letting go of your habits and routines and rituals that don't serve you. So you might have to kind of, depending on what it is, like this is obviously so broad, but um, you might just have to slowly let it go. You know, it's like if you're um, eating a chocolate bar at 3 p.m., you might just have to start like by dropping down and doing that only every second day. And then just slowly weaning yourself off, maybe having a three quarters of the bar and then half the bar and then a quarter and then you eventually drop down. So there are ways that you can do this in a progressive, really supportive way. So that is my little um, workshop on mindset, habits, routines and rituals. I hope this has been helpful for you. Um, I just want to highlight a couple of key takeaways as we wrap up here so number one is just to be mindful and slow and compassionate and loving with yourself while you're going through this process because it is going to take time and it is better to do it in a slow sustainable way rather than trying to rush into it number two just be mindful of your thoughts how you're spending your time what you're doing in your day-to-day -day that is adding up to the fabric of your entire life um and number three is to uh slowly implement new routines and rituals and slowly take the other ones away that you want to release so that it has time to sort of settle into your space and integrate and really anchor into your life so thank you for joining me for day one and i'll see you for the next workshop